Oh, bam. All right, Bourbon Quest. It is right January here on Bourbon Quest. So, yeah, we don't do uh, dry January. We do rye January. So, remember, stay hydrated, my friends. We all know I'm not a huge rye guy, but it is rye January. So, that's what we're doing. So, I think, you yeah, know, one of the iconic brands known for their rye is uh, Whistle Pig and they're mighty proud proud of it with their prices on that as well so um, yeah I need to get a, another uh, Whistle Pig 10 year old store pick which I've been meaning to do because I recently finished one off but until then I thought I'd bring you these three Whistle Pigs that I do have on my shelf and so what do we have Let's start with, uh, we'll go right to left today. So this is a Whistle Pig, uh, 12 year age stated, uh, 80, yeah, 86 proof Canadian rye whiskey, old world rye, best poke blend, uh, expertly aged in. 64% geez can I read that uh, yeah 64% Madeira cask 25% Salterns casks and 11% pork casks oh yeah it gives it up there too 64% Madeira 25% Salterns and 11% port 12 years what did I say? 86 proof. Uh, what does it say on the back here? You have discovered a rare best plug blend of whistle pick old world rye, a unique expression of bold rye character elevated through old world bear aging traditions after 12 years slumbering in new American oak barrels. The whiskey was divided and carefully finished in Madeira Salterns and port cask at long last a custom marriage of the three finishes was selected by hand to create this best boat plan best but i don't even know what the freak that word means best boat if you can enlighten me on that bourbon quest let me know what the word best poke means because i don't have a clue but it's a best poke blend what the hell ever that means Obviously, I've not had very much of this. I do remember I was not a fan of it initially, so we'll see about tonight. So there's our pour in there. Um, and then this is one I picked up uh, a while back, like in 2020 during the uh, pandemic. And it's a uh, whistle plague not farm stock but home stock i think that was because everybody had to stay at home during the pandemic um because it used to be what they called a farm stock whiskey and then they slashed out the farm and put home on there i think that was just a marketing thing but uh yeah because it says blended together while apart because we all had to stay apart back in 2020. uh again 86 proof rye wheat and barley Crop number four, a blend of whiskeys. So then on the back, oh dear Lord. So the recipe is, all right, so there's a percentage, a type. All the types are a blend of whiskeys, age, production, batch, and wood. So anyways, it's kind of confusing, but it's, so it's 45% rye, four year old rye from Vermont and Vermont oak. And then 30% five year old wheat Canadian in rechar wood. And then 25% five year old Canadian barley in rechar wood. So says here, uh, this whiskey was created by the refined taste of thousands of palates through a virtual blending event. 
together with the flavor 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 community we invited friends from across the u.s to select this perfect combination of rye wheat and barley we created this expression with our fans to celebrate life and lift spirits in the unprecedented time of social distancing in spring 2020 i told you it had something to do with the damn pandemic i had this open before but honestly i don't remember it's a lot lighter in color than the best book but as well the next one we're going to get into what up q you want to come be on the channel probably not so there's the home stock and then this one I picked up not too long ago. No, it's probably been six months. Uh, oh, both of these, that's not, but this, yeah, was a, uh, a Total Wine store pick. And then so is this, uh, a Total Wine store pick. Uh, again, it's a uh, 12 year old age stated Best Poke Barrel Rye expertly aged in cognac casks again 86 proof so that seems to be the trend on these all of them are 86 proof uh, no additional information on the back other than a product of canada of course uh bottled in vermont all right i hope this is better let's see so this is going to be a uh, fresh cork pop. Yeah, so we get that out of the way. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, again, a best bug barrel rye, but it doesn't have the blending of the Madeira Salterns or what was it, Port? At least it doesn't say that, but they're both supposed to be best bug, so I don't know if that what that means but anyways so uh oh yeah fresh cork pop and since this is whistle pig suey 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 that was a shitty cork pop kind of like arkansas <laughs> sorry arkansas fans had to throw that in there <laughs> that reminds me i remember hearing a story like I think this was back in late 1800s maybe early 1900s that there was a gentleman that was the governor of Arkansas and let me know Arkansas people if I'm wrong on this but was the governor of Arkansas and I don't remember his first name but his last name was Hogg and him and his wife gave birth to twin daughters and at least the story i heard was he named them ima and yura so i'm a hog you're a hog because <laughs> he was a big arkansas fan i don't know that was crazy poor girls i'm a hog you're a hog jesus what were you thinking bro you probably been drinking some whistle pig whiskey or something when you came up with that all right so that's our uh, two ounce uh, infinity bottle pour for this uh, 12 year old whistle pig finished in cognac cast. So in you go. Ooh. Right to the brim. All right. All right. We got to have George come drink some or I'll have to transport it to him. Whatever. All right. So let's get into these. Let's start. We're going to go. Right to left, this is the uh, best poke finished in those Madeira Salterns and what was I say, Port? Pretty sure it was Port. Yeah. So, alright. Cheer. Right quest. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I get some cherry, definitely mint, pine. But dude, that's like a combination of cherry, mint, and pine. I mean, 
you gotta take it for what it's worth. So number one, I'm not a big rye guy, but the nose is decent on this. I mean, nothing that would steer me away. Nothing that would necessarily invite me either, but it's decent. Again, it's 86 proof, so. Alright, cheers, Bourbon Quest. Yeah, tons of mint, a little bit of cherry, a touch of pine, 86 proof, and I know, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I know it's over 100 bucks, probably like 120, maybe even 130. Yeah, I would say it's a pass. Like, I wish I had one, or I'll, I'll get one before the end of the month, more than likely, hopefully. Because I was a big fan of the uh, Muscle Pig 10-year uh, single barrel store pig, also from Total Wine, that I have finished off in the last month or two, and was wanting to replace it. That one was like 115 I think. Their current store pick is like 106, but I was I was still gonna pick that up, but yeah. I mean I wouldn't pay a hundred bucks. I mean I wouldn't pay thirty bucks for this to be honest with you. Then that's me not being a big rye guy. It's and it's eighty six proof. I mean seriously, 120, 130 bucks for granted it's twelve years old, but eighty six proof? No, that's a hard pass. In my opinion. I mean, even if you're a big rye guy, there's... I mean, you can get a Rittenhouse for 24 bucks, a Pikesville for, what, 65 70 I just picked up earlier today a Russell's Single Barrel Rye. Uh, I want to say it was 110 proof. That was... Uh, tax and everything was $71 out the door. So it was like 64 and then with tax, 71 yeah. I mean, I'd buy two of those before I'd buy this again. But yeah, I mean, Rittenhouse, uh, Pikesville, hell, even the Willet we just did a video on were sub-100, uh, like 59 for the four-year and then maybe 89 for that uh, single-barrel five-year that I did, which was freaking fantastic. Now, this is a hard pass. Yeah, yeah, total pass. I mean, even if you're a rye person, like I just gave you four or five better ones for way less than this. I think that's, and I've never bought a false hog or any of the other crap. I just think, now, would I like to go visit Whistle Pig? Because I heard their their grounds and uh, yeah their grounds and everything are beautiful that they're super nice people uh, lay out the red carpet for you treat you right but I just think I just think their prices are way out of line for what they offer I mean yeah I would definitely not buy that again. Let's, let's go to the second one. This is the Homestock, which is supposed to be a blend of a bunch of people that collaborated on this. I don't know. Again, it's... I mean, it's soft. It's sweet. There's mint. A little bit of chocolate, baking spice. I would say this is better in the nose than, than the other one. Hey, Q! Welcome, buddy. You want to say hi to Bourbon Quest or Rye Quest tonight? Here, you want to try a little rye? A little, little rye? All right. So, cheers, Rye Quest. Yeah, I get a little bit. A little bit of caramel, chocolate, mint. Not much there. I mean, it's 
it tastes flat. Obviously, 86 proof, yeah, it tastes like very little alcohol. The color is light on it. It's light on the on the palate, on the mouthfeel, no finish. I mean, it's like, I think this was like maybe 50, probably more like 60 bucks. Yeah, I wouldn't pay that for it. I think the only reason I bought it because it was during the pandemic and it said home stock. I, well, that was a mistake. Cheers, Rackwest. Yeah, I mean, is it, it, I mean, 86 proof, it's light, there's no mouthfeel, no finish. Yeah, those three or four notes, very soft, very light, totally crushable. Um, maybe if you're looking for a rye experience in the month of July or August on a hundred degree plus day, maybe that would be for you, but I, again, I don't think it's worth 60 bucks. So hard pass, so thumbs down, thumbs down. All right, let's go to this one because this is a best book, whatever finished in cognac so let's see I mean there's obviously a, a lot darker color on both the other two stay hydrated my friends I mean yeah the nose is much greater on this in my opinion it's sweeter softer more cherry more baking spice, more pine than mint. Well, that's actually pretty good on this one. But again, this is 130, so I don't know. Cheers, my friends. Definitely better than the other two. Um, yeah, I get cherry. I get almond, vanilla, caramel. I do get that touch of mint. Yeah, the cognac finish does, I think, helps balance out the, the harshness of those rye spices. And you get more, more sweetness with it being finished in that cognac with uh, definitely cherry, vanilla, caramel. There's some black pepper and baking spice on there. A little bit of mint, but really drowns out. I don't get any pine on that. Is this good? Is it enjoyable? Yeah. Again, 130? No. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem with Whistle Pig is what they deliver for their price point is, I, I would definitely, I don't care what their price is where I wouldn't buy either one of these again. Is this good? Yes. Can I enjoy this? Yes. Will I continue to enjoy it? Yes. Will I ever buy it again? No. At what, 130 or something? No. It's, I mean, I think, what was it, if not the last video, the one prior to the last one, granted that was from 2020 also, that was the uh, Blood Oath finishing cognac, that was eh, right at 100 bucks. Yeah, much better than this. Now, does the cognac finish do it benefits and, and favors? Absolutely. Because um, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't even, I mean, I'll, I'll give both of these to George or something. Because uh, I could care less if I had 
ever had another sip of either one of these two but this one is good I can enjoy it I can appreciate it but I cannot justify what 130 even 120 I mean at best would be like 60 bucks which about the only thing you get from Whistle Pig for 60 bucks is a uh, piggyback six or something which I haven't had nor do I ever plan to because outside of probably the only thing from Wilson Pig I would get again would be because I did really like and enjoy the uh, Wilson Pig 10 year uh, age stated single barrel store pick from Toto Wine and I did plan because I like that one so much I will get another one and then when I do get that one, probably sometime here in January for uh, Ride January, we'll, we'll evaluate it and see even if it's worth it because it's still going to be 120 to 130 bucks. And that's, I mean, I'm going to do it, but that's really hard to justify for me not being a rye guy when I can get a freaking Rittenhouse for 24 bucks or a Pikes Hill for maybe what 60 to 75 somewhere in there and then those Willocks I just did a review on for well the uh, 59 and 89 come on mixers 60 thereabouts Hell, even my number one rye of all time was Jack Daniels single barrel proof rye, which was between 60 and 70. Granted, it was a one time, as far as I know, special limited release. I think that was 2020. It was either 2020 or 2020. No, it was 2020. That was amazing. Under 100 bucks. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So. I'll probably give the Whistle Pig 10 year uh, single barrel barrel strength store pick another try just to see. But yeah, that that's the Whistle Pig's biggest problem. I don't even know. Let me know, Burman Quest. Have you had a Boss Hog? Because is it worth 500 bucks? But I just. I, I, I can't imagine that it is but let me know if I'm wrong because to me these three whistle pigs are nowhere near what their prices are and the only one I would buy again if it was at a reasonable price would be this one in cognac finish but that would have to be at like 50 60 bucks which I bought this one for like 130 so that that's I don't know I mean I get I, how do they justify that price and if you're a whistle pig fan and and you think it's worth that price or more let me know why because I don't get it and I think that's whistle pigs biggest problem is they're they're trying to tout themselves as a superior product uh, demanding that superior price point and at least in my experience it it doesn't deliver tell me I'm wrong tell me I'm crazy which I know I am but hey thanks for watching I just you know it's bride January so whistle pig is known for their rise I think that's all they do um, but number one, I don't think they're good. Number two, they're definitely double or more what you should be willing to pay for it. And therefore, go pick up a written house for 24 bucks. Pick up a Pikesville, a Willet, uh, a Mictors. Uh, hell, a Knob Creek uh, cast strength. 
I also I just picked up uh, was it today? Yeah, I picked up today a Russell single barrel uh, rye tax and everything out the door, seventy one bucks. So, anyways, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, do it today. Subscribe, or else Q will not get any more treats. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He will, but. I, we would appreciate it if you subscribe and uh, after you do the channel a favor by subscribing do yourself a favor ring that bell for notifications that way you don't miss a damn thing here on bourbon quest and then in january right quest and then smash that like button helps the youtube algorithms leave a comment let me know what you think about whistle pig I'm dumbfounded how they sell their stuff at this price, but maybe I'm wrong. Stay hydrated, my friends. We'll be back again soon, my friends. Love you, Bourbon Quest, a.k.a. Rye Quest, during January. And cheers. This is good. It's not worth whatever I paid, $120, $130. That's a wrap. Hey, Hugh. Q, come here. Thanks for tuning in. Q says hello. He's a big, well, he's more of a bourbon fan than a rye fan, just like me. We'll see you next time. And remember, my wish and Q's wish for you, as always, is that may all your bourbon quest or rye quest dreams come true that's a wrap ha <laughs> ha see you soon bye baby love you q you're the greatest yeah whistle pig you need to change your game you're overpriced <laughs>